In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy, dear sisters and brothers. We are on the 13th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, and the Gospel passage for our reflection today is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Many a times we all have this question, how to study a Bible passage? Of course, there are so many different ways of Bible study, but today I wish to use one method of Bible study and as we study the passage, let us also receive the blessings of the Gospel passage. This method is asking relevant, important questions to the passage for our study. So today we ask seven simple questions, seven simple questions to the passage. Whenever you study a Bible passage, you can use these seven questions, ask the questions. When we ask relevant questions, we are able to go deeper into the passage. So the first question, first question that we ask to the passage is, is there an example that I can follow? Is there an example that I can follow? Now let us, let us look at the passage. In the gospel today, we have two people. One is a synagogue official, probably a wealthy, rich, influential person. Another is an anonymous woman who is sickly and poor. They are from two different realms of the society, but they both have something in common. They both had deep faith. What we must follow from them is the faith. Jairus, the synagogue official, came to Jesus begging for his daughter. And the woman who had a flow of blood for more than 12 years, she came with one intention, I must touch him and get the healing. They both had deep faith. We must follow their example of faith. The second question that we can ask is, is there a prayer that I can pray in the passage that I am studying? Is there a prayer that I can pray? Look at Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, verse 23. This is a prayer of Jerus. When he approached Jesus, he said, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Jerus makes this sincere prayer. Jesus, my little, my little daughter is at the point of death. You come, lay your hands on her. How often we can make this prayer for our family members. Maybe there is someone in our family who is sick. Maybe there is someone in our family who has lost faith. Maybe spouse, children, make this prayer. Make the prayer of Jerus, your own prayer. Jesus, my son, my daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on him or her so that she or he may be made well and live. Let us repeat this prayer of this synagogue official. The third question is, is there a command that I must obey? Look at verse 36, Mark 5, 36. Jesus says to the synagogue official, Do not fear, only believe. This is a promise, this is a command that we must obey. There are moments, storms hit our life. There are moments, struggles and difficulties come in our life. The Lord says, Do not fear, only believe. We said last week, when we do not have faith, the fear will overpower us. The Lord says, do not fear, have faith, you will overcome. This is a commandment that we must obey. The fourth question, is there a sin that I need to confess? What is the sin I, can, I need to confess in the light of the gospel passage? The sin is sin of unbelief. We read in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, verse 14. After resurrection, Jesus scolded his disciples for their unbelief 
and for their hardness of heart. So often a sin in which we all fall is this sin of unbelief. Many a times we become professed Christians but practicing atheists. We, what we profess, we don't believe. Am I falling into the sin of unbelief? Do I have faith like that woman? Do I have faith like that father who came begging for his daughter? The fifth question that we can ask, is there an error that I must avoid? What is the error that we must avoid? The error is the error of the crowd. Think of the large crowd who were following Jesus when he was walking through the streets. They did not receive any blessing. When Jesus realized power had gone out of him, he turned and asked, who touched me? And we can almost hear Peter and other disciples saying, Jesus, why such a foolish question? Can you not see the whole crowd falling on to you? Why are you asking this absurd question? Who touched? Everyone is touching you. But Jesus waited there, repeating the same question. Who touched me? Because the Lord knew only one person has touched him with faith. How often we are like the crowd. We are there for everything. We are going there for Sunday Mass. We are participating in, uh, in prayer service. But do we have the faith or are we like the crowd, indifferent? Indifferent to the power of God. Many a times, my sisters and brothers, we begin to think nothing will change. This is my fate. Let us come out of this error. Believe in the power of God. That woman believed. Though she suffered for more than 12 years, she believed Christ will heal me. Jairus believed his daughter will be brought back to life through the touch of Jesus. If you have power, believe in the power of Jesus, we will also experience healing. The error we must avoid is the error of the attitude of the crowd. In one occasion, in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus made this complaint. Jesus said, These people worship me with their lips but their hearts are far from me they pray with their lips but their hearts are far from me is that a complaint about us the error we must avoid is the error of the attitude of the crowd that is attitude of indifference the sixth question we ask is there a truth that i must believe gospel of saint mark chapter 5 verse 34 Jesus said to the woman, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. The truth that we must believe is this. When we have faith, we experience healing. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. We experience the mercy, the healing, the power of God when we have faith. If I touch an electric line with a with a dried wood with a dried wood nothing will happen but if I touch an electric line with another metal piece the power will flow when I don't have faith Bible is a storybook when I don't have faith the holy mass become mere ritual when I don't have faith everything that I do become meaningless therefore in one occasion Jesus asked this question will there be faith when the Son of Man comes. The truth that I must believe in the light of the Gospel is this, I must make efforts to grow in faith. That woman had that faith and she made the way to come and touch the Lord. Let us also grow in faith. If I have faith, I will experience the blessings of the Lord. And the last question, the seventh question, what is my favorite Bible verse in the passage that I am reading and studying? What is the favorite verse that I want to pick up? I wish to pick up the verse 28, Gospel of Saint Mark chapter 5, verse 28. That woman in her heart said, If only I touch the fringe of his garment, I will be healed. She believed, she said in her heart, and she got the healing. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read an occasion when Saint Paul saw a man who had faith enough to be healed. He said, be healed, and he was healed he could stand up the crippled man could stand up do we have such faith 
we need to say in our heart if only i touch the fringe of his garment i will be healed when we stand on the line to receive the holy communion we need to say this prayer in our hearts lord lord increase my faith today i'm going to not only just touch you i'm going to receive me in my heart increase my faith the disciples made the prayer luke 17:5 lord increase our faith gospel of st mark chapter 9 verse 24 a man who brought his son to jesus said lord i believe help my unbelief like all these people let us also pray that our faith may grow my sisters and brothers we just used a small bible study method applying to the gospel passage today asking seven questions one thing we should always remember bible study is not in for interpretation bible study is primarily for application what i read what i study what i study is to be applied remember god's word in the letter of saint james chapter 1 verse 21 be doers of god's word not mere hearers whatever the lord inspires us we should first and primarily apply to our life today's gospel passage invites all of us to examine our faith grow strong in our faith make steps to grow in faith many a times our crises like the woman's crisis like jeru's crisis we all face with many crises in our life our crises are allowed by god so that we can grow in faith what is a crisis that you are going through pray that this crisis may make you to meet the living god and grow in your faith journey amen god bless you